We met in high school, 1948, Humes High School in Memphis, Tennessee. I actually we bonded on a music class in the eighth grade. I always came to school, brought his guitar. It's Christmas time. He got up, sang a couple of Christmas songs, and from that moment on, I knew there was something special about him. I was here from 1948 to 1977. Of course, there were two years he was in the Army. And of course, when he would go away to make a motion picture or go on tours, sometimes I couldn't go on all the tours. And I weren't there on every shoot. I would just really, if he was making two pictures a year, I would really go out for the summer uh, shoot. And I was in eight of his motion pictures as a merely bit part, extra, silent bit, what have you. I became a radio and television performer in Memphis. Elvis started recording for Sun Records. We became even closer. There was a period where I was out of work, 1958, 57 to 58, and Elvis hired me and I traveled with him, went all over America, all across Canada, and into Hawaii and back into Hollywood to make the movie Jailhouse Rock. When Elvis came out of the Army, he asked me to work for him again. I told him I was too well established and I hope he understood. He said, sure, he said, but you have carte blanche to go with me anytime. And so I would schedule, as I said, vacation time as to when he was shooting a picture or on tour, and I'd jump out and travel with him or hang with those guys. I'm writing a book, and a lot of them will be in there. Uh, there, there were so many. Uh, the one that comes to mind is the Pan Pacific Auditorium in, in Los Angeles, and uh, when uh, Elvis did uh, some shows there early on in 57, and uh, they said he was uh, suggestive, and they brought big movie cameras out from movie studios and they filmed his entire show, the second show. And they said if he did anything suggestive, we're gonna have him rush to take him off stage. And Elvis came out like he was handcuffed. It was kind of cute and he showed the audience because it had been all over the news. And Elvis wiggled his little finger. When he wiggled his finger, the kids went crazy and you know it was all over. But uh, and then when we got ready to leave the building, uh, the kids had surrounded the building <clears throat> and we're in this cab trying to get away and we can't because we're blocked in. And the kids got on top of the cab and the cab started caving in. And we had to lay down on our back and take our feet and hold the roof of the cab up. And we told the cab driver, it's either us or them, hit that gas pedal, man, and we barely got out of there. When Elvis got married, I was one of 14 people in his actual wedding. The only 14 people in the room, Milton Pearl Suite at the um, Aladdin Hotel in Vegas. When I got married, Elvis was the best man at my wedding. I'm the only guy in the world Elvis Presley was the best man for at a wedding. He paid for my entire wedding and it, it was just a fan, fantastic. I, I would say the Phoenix outfit, that the Phoenix outfit or the, or the uh, American Eagle. It would be sort of a toss-up between the two. I, I thought the American Eagle really fit Elvis, as I said, because many times he was very patriotic. Served in the Army, didn't try to get out, went and served his country. And he loved eagles. There was a lot of eagles around Graceland. There were statues, and people got word that he liked eagles, and so a lot of people would give him uh, eagle memorabilia. Never in the history of the world has an entertainer had that adulation for 30 years after he passed away. I mean, uh, Caruso didn't have it, John Wayne, Marilyn Monroe, Jimmy Dean, President Kennedy. Nobody has what he uh, continues to draw upon the fans and uh, draw people to Graceland. 800,000 people a year go through Graceland. It's unbelievable. He would have loved the fact they were still giving him support and were standing by him all these years, even though he's been gone for 30 years. I think he would have been extremely proud of his fan corps.